Oregon versus Michigan. This Oregon team is the first team to defeat Michigan and Ohio State in the same season since 2015. We're talking 10 years now. So that is a big deal. So Oregon has gone into the Big Ten, knocked out the, the defending champs, even though that this team does not look anything like it did last year. They've knocked out Ohio State. And Oregon's defense only gave up 270 total yards. They were excellent in the first half. And if you're going to nitpick and try to find anything wrong with this Ducks team, their third quarters have been not very good. Uh, what on the, the they have not scored very many points on the on the season. Yeah, that's not it. And the Oregon Ducks have lost Taz Johnson, their superstar All-American wide receiver for at least some portion of time. Cuz he went out of the game, what was it? First first drive fell, he, he caught a ball, got slammed down out of bounds, came back out with with a sling. And that was it. That was the last time we saw of him. And he posted a, 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 a heartbreak on his social media. So we don't know what that means. We don't know how long he's going to be out. But that the, the way it is, looks like he's going to be out for some point in time. But this Oregon Ducks team, there are times where people get ranked number one because they earned it, right? And success is actually harder to deal with than failure for a lot of people. or And for most people in general. Because when you're chasing somebody else, that's that's number one. You always got somebody in front of you and you see how far away they are. And you're like, we, we got to catch them. 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 But then what happens when you catch them and pass them? A lot of times people don't know how fast that they need to run to keep their lead or to grow their lead. Because if you go sprinting, you're going to get tired, right? So it's a matter of pacing yourself, but it, but still at the same time, pushing forward, getting better, continuing to build. So you're peaking at the right time. And that's the thing that you see with this Oregon team. They appear to be getting better and better. And this game, this 38 to 17 game was actually not quite as close as it looked, but I will give Michigan some uh, credit. They have picked who their quarterback is going to be for the most part, which is Davis Warren. And they put uh, Alex Orgy in a few times. I do not understand this Alex Orgy stuff. This is essentially wildcat football. He is going to come in the game and he's going to run the football. That's it. And they tried to trick Oregon with a couple passes. Oregon was like, absolutely not. We're going to play one-on-one -on -one coverage and, you know, and they essentially play it like it, like it's wildcat. There's no respect. So Michigan needs to dump this Alex Orgy project and continue with Davis Warren because the kid's getting better. He was 21, it was 12 for 21 for 164 yards and two touchdowns. First, I'm gonna get a kid credit because he's got the stones to make throws and he's not just coming out there because he's a former walk-on and he got benched earlier in the season. He didn't come out there playing scared. I gotta give him all the credit in the world for that because a lot of people would be highly conservative in those roles and he made two touchdown passes he threaded the needle now the first one i do not believe that he was throwing to the guy that caught it i think he was throwing it to the guy behind him and the second one he walked through the raindrops with that pass but still it was still highly impressive highly impressive so big ups to to davis warren now on the other hand on the rushing game front Oregon gave up two big runs in the game. They gave up an 18-yard run to uh, Donovan Edwards, and they gave up a 26-yard run to Alex Orgy. But for the most part, outside of that, it was lockdown city in the run game. Like, there were no big, huge gashes. There were, there, like, Michigan figured out they literally couldn't run the ball. If Michigan could have run the ball three straight times and get first downs, they would have, and they couldn't. But they, but the kid, Colston Loveland, he finished with seven catches for 112 yards of that 160 uh, of that 165 they threw for. That kid can ball. That is an absolute NFL stud tight end, and I love watching him play. He gets it. He sticks his nose in the run game, blocks well. He is a receiving threat. He runs hard with the ball. Love watching that kid play. Highly, highly impressive. 
Now, on the Oregon side, it, it's funny in the run game, right? Because they finished with 37 carries, 176 yards, and four touchdowns on the ground, including the one for Dylan Gabriel to go along with his 294 passing yards and a touchdown. This Oregon run game is starting to click, and they were able to run the ball to finish the game, which is highly impressive because finishing the game with the ball in your hands is always always big always big yes and i know that they still had to kick it off but 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 that's because they went down and scored a touchdown but the game was it was seconds left but when you can finish the game with the ball in your hands that's when you know that you are dominating a game when it matters the most now going forward this oregon team when you look at the rest of their of their schedule this week upcoming they have maryland in eugene and then they got to visit Wisconsin on November 16th. Not sure how the weather is going to be, but Wisconsin is now five and four with losses to Alabama, USC. Well, blowout losses to Alabama, blowout loss to USC, blowout loss to Iowa, and then a hmm, a curiously close loss. I mean, even though it's two 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 scores, but not even close enough. Curiously close loss to Penn State. Hmm. Wonder why. Hmm. That Penn State offense, only 28 points. But anyways, though, um, and then they have a bye week, and then they play UW. So uh, so for Oregon, if they're able to navigate through the rest of these last three games, get to the Big Ten Championship, win the Big Ten Championship, then they're going to get a bye week. Coming up to, uh, well, they'll get the week off, and then they'll get the bye week going into the college football playoff so that'll give tez johnson at least six weeks potentially seven weeks to get healthy for a playoff game and then if oregon can win their first playoff game now we're looking at eight nine ten weeks put potentially before a semifinal national championship game so there could be a situation where he could be back and he's one of the most explosive slot players in the country. So time can be on your side if you can earn that, earn that time.